I said praise the Lord. I didn't say praise me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, for he is truly worthy to be praised. While you're yet standing, if you would be so kind to turn to Mark, the fourth chapter, 14 through the 20th verse. Mark, the fourth chapter, the 14th through the 20th verse, King James Version. Amen. You have it, say it now. Amen. Amen. You have it, say help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Any reason you're hearing, the sower soweth the word. And these are the, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they had heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, mm -hmm. who, when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. And have no root in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so endure but for a time. Mm -hmm. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the sake, for the word's sake, mm -hmm. immediately they are offended. Mm -hmm. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, mm. choke the word, and it become unfruitful. Mm. And these are they which are sown on good ground, mm -hmm. such as hear the word and receive it, mm. and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And if I would use for a thought today, if we would talk about somebody, let's talk about the sower, the sower. his seed, mm -hmm. and the soils. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you, oh God, for how you have come into our hearts and our life. We pray, God, that every stony area until ground in our life, God, that you would... Turn it over in the name of Jesus. That you will cultivate us for your glory, God. That you will tear down every stronghold in our life. We're going to cast down every high imagination and everything that exalts itself higher than you. We come to bless you today, God. Now bless the hearers of your word, oh God. And let them become doers of it in Jesus' name. We pray and praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The sower, his seed, and the soils. Now, as Jesus sat by the seaside, he was teaching the multitude. He began to talk about an image that they understood. He talked about a man taking seed into the field, and he pictured that man casting the seed upon the earth. Now, this seed fell upon the ground and landed upon the earth different or upon different types of soil. Mm -hmm. Some of the seed brought forth fruit. Other seed did not. And Jesus used this common image to teach those who heard him or heard about him. And he began to tell them about the conditions on the human's heart. Now, the sower is the Holy Spirit. The seed is the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. And the soil is the human heart. From his word, we learn that the human heart is like soil. Mm -hmm. It can either receive the word of the gospel and produce a harvest of spiritual fruit, or it can be unprepared and produce nothing. Produce nothing of value for the glory of the name of God. The sower, his seed, and his soils. The sower in the parable is a man who goes into the, his field with the intention of raising crops. Nobody goes and plant and doesn't want to see what they planted grow. So he sowed with the intention of seeing, of reaping what he sown. Mm -hmm. 
He expected to reap a profit from the crop he is sowing. Now this is the case with the Lord our God. He sent his son, Jesus, into the world to die. And he sends his spirit into the world to convict lost people of their sins so that he might reap a spiritual harvest to the glory of his name. Don't you want to see seeds grow when you plant? You have to prepare the heart. In order to receive the word of God, you have to prepare your heart. There are places that the word of God is going to hit. And if your heart is not prepared to receive it, you will reject it. Amen. So the second thing you need to do after you prepare your heart, a seed must be sown. Mm -hmm. The third thing is that you must keep the seed moist. Mm -hmm. You cannot allow the seed that was sown to dry up or it will die. Mm -hmm. So the four soils represents four different ways people respond to God's message. Different times or phases in a different, in a person's life. You know, you might have the day where you go, oh Lord, I, the blessing's coming. Oh, everybody want to receive the word. Oh no, the Lord spoke to me and said, oh, wealth and riches going to be at my house and, and I, you know, I'm going to endure. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to have, I'm going to set up to be blessed. Oh, we receive that. But when correction comes, We look around like God ain't talking to me. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking to anybody else, but God is not talking to me. But at the self same time, just as well as he want to bless you, we think blessings are just material things. But blessing is a heart that's been tenderized to receive correction. All right. All right. How will we willingly apply God's message to some areas of our life, but we resist applying it to others? To the other part of your life that needs to be torn down. But you see, Lord, you just don't understand how bad they hurt me. That ground must first be tilled. In order for a seed to penetrate through that ground, it must be turned over. That's where the Holy Spirit comes into your life and begins to convict you. But you don't want the conviction because conviction in your mind means that you're guilty. But really conviction means there's a hard place in your heart that must be tilled. Most people don't understand what till means. It means it needs to be turned over. Mm. See, when you start turning that ground over, you're loosening it up to receive. When you are hurt, you're not to sit there and marvel over the fact that you've been hurt like you the first one, the only one, and there's no other, other person in the world that's been hurt like I've been hurt. Because honey, when I talk about hurt, I'm talking about hurt, hurt. But hurt is hurt. Pain is pain. Whether it's you cut on your arm or your leg, when you go to use that limb, it's hurting. Uh -huh. But it's not our job to, to, uh, to nurture the hurt. Mm. We're to go after the healing. And I'm finding out folk don't want to be healed. They rather talk about something negative than to have a positive effect on somebody else's life because I've been through that. So you may respond like the good soil to God's demand for worship, but respond like the rocky soil to his demand to give people in need. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you may open to God about your future, but close it concerning how you spend your money. Mm -hmm. You should always strive to be like the good soil in every area of your life. Amen. It is worth noting that the seed always changes the ground in which it is planted. All right. The seed changes the ground. Uh -huh. The problem is you want the, the ground to change the seed. Mm. But it's the seed that changes the ground that really finds that there is goodness in that ground and it draws from that ground so that it can change itself and you also. Amen. When the seed of the gospel finds its lodging place in a heart that has been plowed by the word of God and tilled by the grace of God, it will germinate and leave that heart forever changed and producing a harvest of spiritual fruit to the glory of God. 
You always want to be able to be fruitful for God. Oh, yeah. No matter where you are, what has taken place in your life, you always want to be in a position that when God say go, you say where? Amen. He say jump, you say how high? Amen. He say preach, you say what's the text? Amen. You always want to be in a position to go for God. To be ready to do his will. But if there's a place in your heart that's not turned, you will not be available or effective for God. So as the sower sows the seed, it fell upon four distinct kinds of soils. Mm -hmm. We should mention that each of the soils was good soil. Mm -hmm. But the condition the soil was in, when the seed landed upon it, it determined the potential, its potential, excuse me, for producing a suitable harvest. Mm. Remember that we are comparing soils to types of humans' hearts. Mm. We're just not talking about seed soil out on the side, but it's your heart. God is dealing with your heart, and most of the time people, when they get saved, they don't feel like they have to change. <laughs> they just feel like this is where I am, and God has to accept me as who I am. Uh, where was God when I was going through this? Because you have to remember, he was there all the time, and everything you've gone through in your life, he was with you, allowing you to be safe. Mm -hmm. The problem is we fail to realize that there's going to be trouble. Yes. Oh, there's a promised table for trouble for the people of God. Mm -hmm. But you feel like because you gave your whole heart to God, nothing's supposed to happen to you. But I beg the difference. You're going to be tested and tried. Oh, yeah. You're going to be proven that you've been proved by God. Oh, yeah. Or approved by God. Amen. So you're going to go through. So the four types of soil mentioned here by Jesus is very revealing. When it comes to understanding the human heart and why people respond to the gospel the way they do. One of these soils is going to paint a perfect picture of your heart. It's going to show you where you really are in this gospel place, in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. See, if you can identify what kind of soil you are as we investigate these verses. Uh -huh. The first one is unresponsive. Uh -huh. That's the one that fell by the wayside. They fail to respond to the seed or the word which was sown. So here comes Satan quickly, removing it, unless they become saved. Mm -hmm. You can know of it, but don't know, don't know it. Mm -hmm. You can hear about God, but don't know him. You can come to church, come on, clap your hands off your feet, sit down when it's time for the word, go to sleep. Or the Spirit of God may be pressing you to do something, and you, you fight him because God didn't know, don't know what they did today. I don't want to say nothing to him. So while you're not wanting to say anything to anyone, you're missing the opportunity for God to heal that broken part in your life. That stony part for him to break it up so that you can see it ain't as bad as it was. It was preparing you for a future so that you can not harden your heart against God, but harden your heart against those that's trying to take you down. The Bible says to, to, to guard your heart. The problem is we open our heart up to any and everything. And when you open your heart up to any and everything, there are some issues. Uh, <laughs> you, you sound like the mom. <laughs> you see that person, they already have an advantage over you. Because you won't forgive. The reason why God takes you back to that pain and why you still think and remember that same pain, you can have the wind blow. It's a certain day. It's a certain time of the day that that thing affected you. And you, you sitting there going through the thing. Instead of saying, God, this is the area that I need healing. I need you to turn this thing over. See, when you address the problem, you're really saying to God, till that ground. Loosen up that soil so it won't have an advantage over me. Because most of the time, we, when we got saved, I know when I got saved, I was so happy, I was going to rejoice in it. Oh, Lord, Jesus, I did oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. But none of my trials ever stopped. But 
But what I did notice when I received Jesus in my broken heart, when I received him on the inside, they couldn't put pain on me like they used to. I didn't feel it like, I was like, oh, I don't feel like killing them. And I don't feel like killing myself. That's when I noted that there was a change on the inside. But listen, the change didn't just start and stop. It meant to continue on in God because there was some more breaking in me that needed to be, something else needed to be broken within me. Because you just don't get to one level in God and that's it. And you, you don't pray anymore. You got a call in your life. Hallelujah. And I'm going on in God. You're going to find out there's some things inside of you when God brings you to the front that you say, God, I know I'm not ready for this. Uh -huh. And grace and mercy going to allow you to stand there. And while you're standing in there doing what God says do, as long as you are willing, he can break you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the wayside refers to the narrow footpaths. The, 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 that uh, ran beside and through the fields. It's like, you know, you ever uh, went through the woods? I know we used to play in the woods. We used to have cookouts on holidays in, in, in Fairmount Park. We had a certain area. But there was pathways. Looked like you could travel. But at the self same time, if you weren't careful, you would step on a, a, a wood or a piece of a twig and it would go through your shoes. So you, it may be a pathway, but that's not the pathway God wants you to take. Because that's called a pathway to the back rim or the, or the back side of, of something where you're traveling to. And, and guess what? It's not a pathway for you. It might be a pathway for the animals, but it's not a pathway for the, in, for the human. And the reason why I'm saying it is because they have foot gear to be able to step on the, 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 the twig. The uh, sticking up wood and, and they can crush it. But we go through it with our sneakers on or shoes on and they let go through. It'll penetrate the through, through the uh, shoe, excuse me, and it'll pierce our skin. So I'm saying this that it can be a pathway for you, for look like for you to go, but it's not one from God. Most time we take a uh, direction from people and say, oh yeah, we can, that looks like a good pathway to get to where we need to go. But you're actually taking a road of destruction. Amen. You don't know what's behind that, what's, what's down past that path that you can't see. Uh -huh. And most people get comfortable in just scary rides. They don't care. They just like going to scary paths and ooh, the haunted house and all that spooky stuff. The thing that gets me is when you know you're going into a spooky place, or an unfamiliar place, and you're afraid, you still want to venture. <laughs> I think I went to the haunted house one time in my life and realized the purpose of a haunted house is to scare me. I don't like to be scared. I don't think that's a fun thing. Some people like it. I don't like that. If you want to come, let's come straight. Yeah. <laughs> don't come up behind me. And, and most of the time, the, they come up behind you and they know you're scared. They're going to touch you. But you have, can't go in fighting. <laughs> well, I forgot the rule. And I slapped somebody. But I had to keep running because I was, they was having little stuff, like mice running across your feet. You're like, oh my God, passing out while you're going through. So why would you take yourself back through there? Why would you do that? If you're not comfortable with something, why would you do it? Most people find comfort in darkness. So the, when the seed fell on the footpath, it could not penetrate the soil and it remained there in the open only to be devoured by the birds. Only for Satan to destroy you. When you come to Christ. And you don't give up everything. You set yourself up for failure. Amen. You set yourself up to be devoured. Mm. To be eaten. It takes the little faith that you have. And crushes it. So you cannot believe. So we are told that this speaks of the person who hears the gospel and doesn't understand it. 
You mean to tell me I go to Jesus? I got to give up this and give up that. I can't do this and I can't do that. When you love somebody, you don't mind. Amen. And that's why Jesus said, take up your cross. To the first he said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and then follow. You cannot never ever follow somebody that you don't believe. They cannot make the connection between the claims of the gospel and their own life. Maybe they are steeped in sin and refuse to believe. Maybe they are callous and cold towards the things of God and refuse to hear and have a hardened heart for years against the call of the gospel. And like the path trampled upon for centuries, they have become hard in heart and the seed of the gospel cannot penetrate the soil of their heart. My, my, my. You can have something done to you in church. You go to church for relief. And people will offend you. They will hurt you inside the church. Oh, yeah. They will hear your testimony and pick up and find somewhere in it that you didn't clarify. And they will use it against you. Amen. And the first thing you do is harden your heart for, towards the people. And now you're doing it towards God. Why? Because you were hurt. And you didn't expect it. But when you come into Christ, hear me out. Most of your wounds are going to be inside of the church. Did I say that? Yes, most of your wounds are going to be inside of the church. They're going to come from people that you never expected to hurt you. Never expected them to say that to you. Oh, I did not want to. I overheard them say that about me. Mm -hmm. But you better mount up. Amen. What people don't realize is this, and I said this earlier, is that when a person is hurting or have been hurt and you know about that hurt, mm -hmm. when you take advantage of that hurt, now you have to deal with God. Amen. Come on. So while they're laughing and talking about you and mistreating you and doing what they want to do in front of your face as if you are nobody, they have no idea what you mean to God. Come on. Come on. And they have no idea how God is going to repay them for the things they are saying and doing about you. So just stay humble. Let them say what they have to say. Let them talk about you. Let them do all manner of evil. But at that point that they're doing it, please don't harden your heart. Amen. Ask God to fix it. Turn it over where so when I hear the next person talk about me, that it will not offend me. So I can be effective and used for your glory. Well, somebody say amen. amen. So when this happens, the devil and his imps will snatch away the gospel. If you don't understand the gospel, if people are offending you or talking when you're supposed to receive the gospel and they got some extra things to say and they interfere with you getting the understanding, the enemy comes to snatch what you heard away because you didn't get an understanding. The, he snatches the seed by diverting the mind mm. and helping the person become I'm even more hardened against God. His job is to make sure you will not receive God in the fullness. Mm -hmm. So we got somebody sitting right next to you, behind you, in front of you, about to distract you so you can't hear. Mm -hmm. Now this person has a heart that is not prepared for the work or grace of, of leading to salvation. We often wonder how people can continue to refuse to accept the gospels, the gospel message. It is because they are hardened to it by their own choice. Own choice. You choose what you want and what you don't want. That's so true. It's your decision. But we use other people as an excuse why we can't hear God mm -hmm. or why we won't change. Because people get in the way. But people have always been in your way before you got here. Somebody talked about you. When you were coming, 
they were talking about you. And as soon as you got wind of air, breathed, they really talked about you. That's a big baby, that's a little baby, that's an ugly baby, that's a pretty baby, that's a bald headed baby, that's a head up to a little bit, too much. Big hair baby, that they talked about you. You didn't understand it because you kept breathing. Mm -hmm. There was no diversion for you because you were in search of air. Just like you were in search of air as a baby, you got to be in search of life as an adult. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God only hardened Pharaoh's heart after he hardened it. Mm -hmm. Read it. He said, Moses, Pharaoh's going to harden his heart. Then when Moses came back and said, he sure did. He said, Moses, now I'm going to harden it. When you don't believe, you may not get a second chance. Come on, come on, come on. He said, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And because they reject. See, when you reject God, mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to reject you and your children. Mm -hmm. So, it's a tripling effect. Mm -hmm. When you stop coming to church, your kids don't come. When you stop believing, they can't believe. Come on, come on. When you stop pressing, they won't press. Come on. When you stop saying we're going to church, they're never going to say we're going to church because they found the program on Sunday that they can watch or something else they can do on a Sunday or a Friday or Tuesday whenever you have service so you can't come. come, on, come on. And what you fail to realize, if you don't come because your heart is hard, your kids are being produced in hardness. You're reproducing failures. Come on, come on. Not to the world, but to God. Mm -hmm. That God can't use them. He can't speak to them. He can't touch them. He can't heal them. He can't break them. He can't chastise them. Nobody's going to tell me what they did. I'm three times seven plus. Well, you can be three times seven plus, but you still need to be chastised. Amen. Amen. The second person is the postal people. They were on stony ground. These stony places are common in the Palestine. Mm -hmm. And often there were an outpour, an outcropping of limestones. Rock covered by a thin layer of topsoil. These were soil that people just walked on. You ever been omitted, overlooked? People walk by you, send little things to you. Nothing encouraging. Mm -hmm. You had to find your way. Yeah. And it was you became so callous, so hard, that when one person said hello, you frowned. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't used to being kind. You weren't used to having people, excuse me, be kind to you. Yeah. You're so used to having people talk down to you, talk at you, say stuff, and now when they say hi, you defensive. You like in karate mode. <laughs> you took a ginsu course. You about to attack me. So the ground looks good and productive. But the seed cast still, it will germinate. It will produce. It will make something. It will spring up. Into a promising plant. It looks like it has hope. It, it looks like it has potential. Mm -hmm. You ever seen somebody talk about God and, and how good God is? And, and, and then you see them outside the church and they smoking and they drinking and they cussing. And you say, huh? in the church they look like they have potential. Mm -hmm. To be who they said they were. Mm -hmm. And you put your hopes on them in the street when you saw them. You was about to speak, hey, and you heard them. You started hiding because I can't believe what I just heard. That should not have come from them because of where they stand or sit in the church. But it happened. And we see them. And we look like they about, they look like they about somebody or something in God. They look like they can preach a house. They can they can preach a house down, but they can't live it. 
Not that they can't, they won't. Because again, remember I said, you make the choice. You make the decision as to how you want what the seed to go in you. You either receive it wholeheartedly or you reject it. You find yourself in a place or position where the word of God is of no value, no effect for you. And you feel like God is picking on you like everybody else. And why I have to read that and that hurt my heart because God said that I can't. What God is saying most of the time, what people fail to realize, what God is saying, he's preparing us to continue to be whole. That's why he told you no. That's why he was diverting you to go the other way. That's why he said pray. That's why he said seek me. That's why he put a word inside of you so you can open up your Bible and go and search after it. Because he's trying to tell you. Some, a lot of times God gives out warning. He does give the warning out. But we fail to adhere or heed to the word warning. Because you know, we, we're something else. We're the only ones that can make a decision against God. All animals live off of instinct. That's why flies are out. Because they think it's summer. Spring. Trees are blooming. Because it's confused. But we know it's still winter by the month. <laughs> But yet we are the only one that converse with God. You've never heard in the Bible, even when Adam began to speak to the animals, and the animals spoke to him, that they turned around and spoke to God. We were the only ones given a right to communicate with God, but yet we won't. Because see, God, I'm, I got to deal with this right now. I got to deal. I got to handle this right now. What you handle? <laughs> you can't handle yourself. That's because that part of your heart is solely in submitting. The Bible says, "Submit yourself to God, and He will, re and you will, you can resist the devil." But the problem is, you're not submitting to God. You're not allowing Him to let you to to let you know that that hurt that you're feeling is something He can heal. Because I've been carrying this all my life, you know. I've been a kid with this thing, and this thing been following. Me all my life, and I, I make up, and what you're saying, I make up a bed for it. I feed it. I nurture it. I find myself in comfort with it. I find myself yielding to the pain and giving it a place and a space in my life when God said, I'm ready to heal. I'm ready to deliver. I'm ready to set you free. But yet, you find yourself right in the corner. With your ice cream cone, sitting on the side, eating, mm -hmm. got your chips, mm -hmm. dipping them in there, making a better meal, salt and sweet, all that going together and not realizing it's killing you. But you got it right. Because we fail to realize that God needs to break up every area in our life. That's why we always resort back to the pain because it has not been broken. That's why we're stuck. Because the thing that hurt us so much, we ponder that in our heart and yet we say we forgive. Because it's going to rise again. It's going to show up. It's going to prove that you have not fully been broken. Because when you, when a person come in the room and they have offended you, hurt you in some way and you tempt up, oh you ain't here. You're not delivered. You haven't been set free. Because somewhere in your life, you find a corner for it. And you go right to that pain and sit there and sit under it like you're sitting under the juniper tree. And you enjoy that pain because it means something to you. When all along God is saying, cast your care upon me because I care for you. So this ground looks good and productive and seed cast there, it will germinate and quickly spring up into a promising plant. But because there is no depth of soil, there's no breaking, no place where it can really go way down in order for the root to spread out. As soon as the sun beats down on that tender plant, it withers away 
and dies out producing nothing. No fruit. What is God after? Fruit. Huh? Yeah, you said it. What is he after? He wants some reproduction. He does not want you to sit there and say, hey, I's a tree. I's a good tree. He went to the fig tree. It was a time of reproduction, a time to produce something. Mm -hmm. Most people only know about the parable where he cursed it. But there was another tree, a fig tree he went to. And he went to it and he said, I'm going to give it time. <laughs> Some people are getting time to reproduce, oh, to get some fruit. He didn't cut down that tree. He waited for it. He's going to wait on some people, and some people he's going to cut down because you already know what to do. I'm talking about the ones he's going to cut down. You've, you've already produced fruit. But somebody made you mad. I ain't giving them nothing. Somebody was in need of a high. Look, I got too much on my, I got too much on my plate. I ain't got time to deal with nobody. I ain't got time. It's going to come out wrong. You are given time in between that hurt to go to God and say, God, I'm hurting here. Heal it for your glory. Yes. The problem is we don't want God to heal it. We like to be mad. That's not one of the fruit of the spirit. Not one. And the reason why it's not one, because that's not who Jesus is. He came to forgive. He came to restore. And the same spirit that he has, it should be in us that we're ready to forgive and to restore. We're able to speak life to people. I know there are some people you just can't allow to come in your life. They coming with hatchets, guns, saws, and everything else to destroy you. And the Bible said, guard your heart, because out of it are the issues of life. And you don't want anyone to be an issue so you cannot produce life. You want to be able to soar in God. You want to be able to bless God at all times. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He put people in their perspective place. Amen. So they are those who immediately receive the gospel, but not counting the cost. Mm -hmm. Have no root spiritually or rea spiritual reality in themselves. Mm -hmm. Not aware spiritually that the enemy come to take you down. His job is to make sure you don't make it. That's right. So he'll use your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your, your children. He'll use the boss. He'll use anybody, your co-workers. To set up a roadblock so you can fall. But you have to be ahead of them. That's why forgiveness is so important. The Bible says that when you forgive, you do not, you, you do not allow Satan to have an advantage over you. Because when you are unforgiven, you don't hear nobody. When your mind is made up to attack the attacker, you don't hear him walk away or take another route. You don't hear that. You hear vengeance is mine. I will repay and you say your name. <laughs> I'm going to get you. You make plots to destroy somebody else when God's looking for an area or a time or opportunity to heal you. Come on. But we don't want that because you know you I got to you know they got to know how I feel. No. You have to know how God feels. You have to know what he he's concerned about. He loves you in spite of you. You have to come to the place of surrendering everything to God. The moment you hurt, you ought to throw your hands up. Amen. 
The moment you can identify with that pain, you ought to lift them up and bow your knees and bring to your heart to God. Why? Because you want them in a place where he can heal. He can deliver. He can set you free. You don't want to have any stony area in your life that God cannot penetrate. Hallelujah. So you believe for a while. But soon you are offended and defect away from the truth. You don't want to hear what God says, I ain't got time. Let's pray. I ain't got time to pray. I, I ain't got time. You're actually saying, God, I don't want you to deal with this. I don't want you to break me anymore. Because you realize this. Even though someone, someone may have hurt you, on the inside, you're hurting yourself. It's called ignorance. The root of ignorance is ignore. You are ignoring an opportunity for God to heal you. For you to be like him. For you to represent him. For you to speak out like he speaks. For you to say what he says. And for you to do what he told you to do because you are ignorant. And because of persecution, the rejection of the gospel is as quick as they have received it. I can say you have, you've seen them. I can say hallelujah, 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 the Lord is on my side. Thank you, Jesus. As soon as something come up, you looking for the glory of God. You looking for that praise. You looking for somebody to say hallelujah, God is good, and you agree with them. You say, mm-hmm. What happened to your praise? Because you allow somebody else to come in and deter you. They offended you purposely just to show you where you really are. So that's why you don't meet God in prayer. That's why you don't seek him. That's why you don't pray. That's why you can't find yourself reading. You can't find time set aside for you and God. You can't do that because your heart is hard. You ain't let God break you. You can get into worship. You don't sit there. You look looking around. And God is calling for worship because he knows where you are and what you need. And because you refuse to lift your hands, to open your mouth and bless him, you take another rock and put it there, place it over top of that stone. Now you got a rock. Now we got to crack the rock. And there's still a little stone. You crack the stone. There's pebbles. And after you crack the pebbles, sand, now you need some water to wash it away. This kind of soil speaks of that heart that makes an emotional response to the representation of the gospel or the presentation. They hear the gospel, they go, oh, I want Jesus, yeah, I want Jesus, I need Jesus, Jesus, I need Jesus. As soon as they go out that door, they need who? Girl, I thank God you was praising God. It means you need Jesus. Yeah, I need him while they're still around and you wind them, swindle away from them. While you get away from them, you're the less you want to talk about God. Because it was an emotional event. And anytime you come emotionally, you're going to be like the children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Now they're Israelite. They jumped into a Jehovah Witness. Or now they're Catholic. You're going every which way, but on your knees to God. This person heard the gospel and said that that's what I need. Yeah. Were they because, or they came because their friend came? You want Jesus? Yeah, I want Jesus. You want Jesus? I want Jesus too. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we came to Jesus together. You came. But what did you give them? Did you give them room and space to tear that heart down? To break it? Because somewhere along the line, the blood is pumping, but one artery is clogged. Are you willing to allow him to unclog that artery? That that blood can flow perfectly throughout that body and cleanse what needs to be cleansed and heal what needs to be healed and break what needs to be broken. So what's your motive in God? What's your real purpose in serving God? They may even show signs of life in the Lord but when this walk in Christ doesn't turn out like they thought it would be, 
they quickly fade away or disappear. Mm -hmm. They dwindle away from the radical claims of Christ and the cross. Mm -hmm. They find other means to be entertained. I've never saw so many people that's willing to be entertained. Don't mind jumping and shouting. As long as they feel good, this is what church is all about. The church is really to instruct you how to stay, how to get into the kingdom, and to stay in the kingdom. This life is going to prepare you for the real life. You thought you were living when you were in sin. You were doing your fine. But you only made a mockery of yourself. You gave someone a chance to exploit you. And to hurt you. But yet at the self same time. We refuse to hear the gospel of Christ. There are not many people who have read their Bible. That are believers from Genesis to Revelation. They allow people to read it to them. And tell them the story. But Jesus said take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. When are you going to go into a real fellowship with God? When are you going to spend time with him, set time aside that you can hear him and allow yourself to be broken? Because just because you are on good ground and you receive the word doesn't mean that there isn't an area in your life that has not been broken. And God is willing to break it. He's willing to tear it down and show you that he can rebuild it in a new found way that is able to produce. So were they saved? No. How do you know? No fruit. You don't produce food, fruit. You're not proving that you're saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. John 15 chapter, when you get it, he talks about the husband man, the vine, the tree. He said you got to bring forth fruit, much fruit. Mm -hmm. And when you bring forth fruit, the father going to purge you. He's going to clean you up mm -hmm. so you can go out and get some more fruit. The problem is you're not bringing fruit. You're not witnessing the people. You're not. I'm not saying bring them to church. Just because you bring them to church doesn't mean it's a fruit. Amen. It could be a vegetable rolling down the street. But when God is after fruit, somebody that you're able to relate to to tell them, yes, I'm going through this and I've gone through this and I've stood through that and I've stood over this, but yet I believe God, I still trust them. I still know that God is able. We got to have a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faith. Yes. Even if God doesn't do it, I'll die knowing that he can. Yes. We don't disqualify God because something didn't happen for us. Amen. We get to the place we know that God could do it, but if he chooses not to do it, I'm going to die knowing that he could. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So when you come when they come before God, these are people that are not broken. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, excuse me, the 33rd chapter, uh, 31 to 33, talks about how they come to church and it's like a lovely word and they love to hear it, but they will not change. They hear the word, but there's no, no, no evidence of change because these people keep coming and still doing the same thing. When are you going to really lay it all out before God? When are you going to come to place and, and, and seek God and let him have his work and will in your life? The problem is you come in and you don't change. <laughs> or you find the, your own interpretation of what God is saying. Mm -hmm. And you skip to the loo down the aisle, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to the loo. But you fail to realize that God is looking for submission. These so folks come to church, they hear the gospel, they, 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 they know the word, but will not live it. And God is after somebody that is willing to live this gospel out. Will you go through? Yeah. Will you feel like giving up? Yeah. Will you feel like God's not listening to you? Yeah. Will you feel like you're on the battlefield all by yourself? Yeah. Will people laugh and talk about you? Yeah. Just because you're planted in good ground doesn't mean folk aren't going to do things to you. But you have to realize what come, whatever come my way, I'm going to stand, I'm going to endure. I'm a, he says endure hardness as a good soldier. You might have got knocked down, but you better get up. 
God's looking for somebody that's going to fight. Let's talk about the third person. You're preoccupied people. Those around the thorns allow legitimate matters and cares of the world to, and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things to take priority over their life. Take priority over the gospel. I got to go to school. I got to name. I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got to do this. And you don't spend no time with God. You have a legitimate excuse why you can't worship, why you can't read. You put things before God. God's not happy. Mm -mm. You find entertainment in the house of God. You can scroll through your phone while you're in the house of God. You can look at pictures and sit there and laugh and you're disrespecting God in his house. Come on, come on. So true. I, I'm eating my Bible. You need to really bring your Bible. That's true. We are so far fetched from seeking God. We have all kinds of excuses why we don't. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, when you read that Bible from that tablet or that phone, you're going to see something drop down in the middle of it to catch your attention, to pull you away from what you're supposed to be reading. Oh, y'all ain't going to slap me today. And you done got yourself preoccupied finding somewhere else to go while the gospel is being preached so you won't be convicted. You can't be converted if you're not convicted. You will never find the change if you don't seek for God. He said, seek me while it's yet day and while you seek me, you will find me. Folk are not finding God. They're finding everything and anything but God. But the Lord knows, you know, that's kind of heavy. I can't bring my Bible. I can't. I can't. You're saying to God, I'd rather be preoccupied than to dedicate myself to you. But we want to go to heaven. I can't. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. On my way to heaven and I'm. What are you doing to get there? You may have taken Jesus in, but you have have you allowed him to strip you? Have you allowed him to convict you, to convert you, to fill you with the Holy Spirit, to baptize you? Have you allowed him to minister to you? Because I'm finding folk are ministering to people over the internet and over the radio and over the the the, the, the uh, yeah the television. And they have not had an experience in God. They're coming up against the worship of God. They're challenging your worship. When you worship God, oh, that's out of order. How dare you tell somebody how to worship? You don't know what I've been through. You don't know why I dance. I dance in victory. I remember that, the, the dance when uh, Mary and them, when they got to the other side in the wilderness from Egypt. The Bible said they danced before the Lord. The problem is you might be trying to dance before people, but when you dance before the Lord, you glorify him like David. I'm not saying get butt naked. But the Bible said David danced before the Lord and his clothes fell off. His wife Michelle was angry with him, said, you making a mockery because you are king. David said, you don't know how good God been to me. Not going to let nobody deter my worship, y'all. You don't know what he's done to me. You don't know how he kept my mind and my heart. Been through some storms and some rains in my life. And I refuse to quit because I know I've been planted in good soil. Not going to let nobody deter me from my worship, y'all. I'm not going to let nobody tell me, shut up, you too loud for saying hallelujah. That's the highest praise you can offer God. So that's why I act like I act, because I'm free. Whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. I purpose in my heart to give God glory. I purpose in my mind to praise Him. I purpose in my soul to give Him a place and a space in me that He can correct me. He can check me. He can tell me no and I bow and say yes Lord. The 
because folk don't understand where you've been, uh -huh. what you've been through. Things that I had to suffer. It's only by the grace of God I'm in the right frame of mind. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things the enemy has done to me personally. And I yet worship God. And I'm going to let somebody tell me I can't dance. I can't dance in freedom. I can't give God a praise. Hallelujah. Been planted on good soil. Hallelujah. What does that look like? Hallelujah. It looks like that the gospel was heard. And I could be stripped. Because I heard the word say, before honor is humiliation. Yes, yes. And I can be humiliated and still go behind the closed door and tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. I can still walk out in the street and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because nobody knows the hidden story. Hallelujah. I don't want the glory. I'm going to tell the story. The glory's going to come, y'all. Most people looking for the glory, but they don't want the story. They don't want to be set up for disappointment. They don't want to be set up and be embarrassed. But God, whatever you allow to take place in my life, I need you to get the glory. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stop praising God. Because don't nobody know what it's like to long for something that you'll never have again. Oh, my God. oh God. But I'm going to bless him anyhow. Yes. Others may run off and leave him. But I don't have anywhere to go. That's how you know you're playing it on good ground. It's in good soil. You can't turn your cheek from God. You can't turn your head from God. You can't start looking down. Even when your soul is aching and hurting, it speaks to you. Why are you disquiet? <laughs> Why are you walking around as if you don't have the victory? My Bible declares that when Jesus was going through it, he, he said he triumphed in it. We keep hollering, deliver me. But you ought to shout in it. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you don't have the victory. You can't beat me. You can't stop me. You can't crush me. You can't devour me. Hallelujah. I'm hooked on Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't have nowhere else to go. I don't have a secret place. The Bible said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Of good fruit. I can't die here. I can't quit. I can't give up. I can't walk out. Why? Because he's real. He's all that I have. He's all that I need. He's my provider. Hallelujah. How do you know you're good ground? Because the ground has good seed. Because the ground has been prepared to receive the seed. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It's been plowed. It's been tilled. Uh -huh. And it's ready to receive. Oh, Somebody need to tell God, uh -huh. plow me. Uh -huh. Till me. Uh -huh. Turn me over. Uh -huh. Till I receive uh, full instructions uh, without doubt. Uh -huh. Turn it away. Uh -huh. yeah. Refusing to praise God. Uh -huh. Why? The God is saying, what come my way? I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I will fight the good fight of faith until he lays me from down here to receive a reward. Hallelujah. I'm not quitting. You better not quit. The problem is, you know you're going through and you tell yourself a lie, ain't going through nothing. Yes, you are. Tell the truth. Yeah. You're going through, but you won't be defeated. Yeah. This is happening in my life, but I'm not allowing that to be my final fate for me. This is not it. Satan doesn't have the last word over my life. And you ought not give it to him because you're going through. I'm 
Don't you dare speak death. You shall not die but live. To declare the wonderful works of God. See, this is when you know you've been germinated. And you've been turned over to produce. I gotta tell somebody, you can't die here. You didn't come to this place to die. Why would God summon you to die when it's still working you to do? You gonna be trying, yes. You gonna be lied on, yes. They gonna mistreat you, yes. They gonna single you out and put you in the Yahil club. And don't nobody wanna be bothered with the Yahils. But you better know that Jesus called you. You better know that He loves you. See, the enemy will tell you He doesn't love you because this and that is happening in your life. Let me tell you something. You know that he loves you because the things that are happening in your life, it keeps you on your knees. It keeps you close to him. It keeps you calling him. When other people are calling you, you can't answer them. But you surely can call him. And he's going to answer you. He's allowing things to happen in our lives so we can stay close. This doesn't mean fall out with God, question God. Lord, I'm in your loving care. I come to the place of realizing, God, whatever you allow to take place in my life, you called it. But I found out this one thing. Even though he may call and cause the pain, it will not stop you from producing. You stop yourself. Because I can't believe I'm going through it. You're supposed to go through it. How in the world the world is going to know you're able to stand, you're able to endure the things that they are going through if you don't go through it and stand and be a witness. Yeah. You're standing on the outside. But when it comes down to the inside, you're falling apart with God. You, you, you got a box and you check off what God did and didn't do. And the things he didn't show up in your life, you mark it against him. You will cry. <laughs> you will be broken. And sometimes you won't go in shock. Because you can't believe that just happened to you. Psalms 51 and 17 says, the sacrifices of God <laughs> are a broken spirit. I've been reading this for about a month over and over, Psalms 51. And broken stuck with me. It just took a hold of me and wouldn't let me go. And it just kept talking about broken. I said, God, what, what do you mean broken? You know, most people think that when something's broken, it's no good. But a broken and a contrite heart means that we come humbly before God, acknowledging our sin and proclaiming God's goodness. We come to the place of realizing, God, I may not have erred, but I need help and only you can help me. Oh, yeah. See, when you're broken, it's, he's able to turn that part over in you, and you look like he, it looks like he don't know what he's doing, but he's mending you. But in a better way so you can be effective for the kingdom of God. Most people don't know that the things that they're suffering, it's only for God to get the glory. He wants you to go through. He wants you to be able to tell somebody, yes, I'm going through. Yes, I've been set this. Yes, that was said to me. Yes, that was done to me. But I'm pressing. You got to find yourself in a poor mode. I'm pressing for the prize of the mark of the high calling. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting, y'all. Sat through so many things. And I said, God look like some of the bad I way to good. But I'm not jumping ship. Paul told the men, don't you jump ship. Get a plank, get a board. And swim yourself to shore. You got to grab a hold of hope. Knowing that God is in. 
He ain't bring you to this place to let you die. He's trying your faith. He's testing your love. You told somebody, I love Jesus. Oh, I love him. He said, oh, that sounds so good. Handle this for me. You know, wait, 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 wait. No, you love Jesus. I love the Lord. You love them so much you'll go through with your head up. You tell somebody, my God is able to deliver. My God is able to heal. My God is able to set free. And if he chooses not, I'm going to go down worshiping. Don't you turn your back on God. Don't you walk out on him like you got a better hope. There's no hope unless you have your hope in Christ. So that's why the enemy don't mind pushing you around. <laughs> he don't mind shoving you, making you feel less. His whole job is to set you up for failure. That's his job. He want to take you under and take you down. But you better not quit. You better be like Job. He said, my foot have held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary need for food. I'd rather take God's word and eat it than eat the natural food. Because I found purpose in him. <laughs> yes, through your pain you're going to find purpose. Yes. You're going to find a reason why you should live. You're going to tell somebody I was born for this. I was created to go through. So I can tell somebody he's going to take me through. Hallelujah. So will you allow God a right to have all of me? That's what that good ground was. That seed that was planted on the good ground. Meant that you opened up your heart and said, God, all or nothing. And God said, I honor that heart because it was offered to me. <laughs> when you offer your heart wholeheartedly to God, you are going to go through. But know that God will not allow you, your enemies, to have an advantage over you. He will never give you over to the will of your enemies. They will never be able to sit and say, aha, aha. If they say, aha, aha, you're going to turn around and find they're not there. God refused to allow you to be made a mockery. So why are they laughing and talking about you? Bow out. Let them say what they have to say. Why? Because God got you. He's more for you than the entire world against you. So if you want to quit, don't you dare. <laughs> no. Where else are you going to go? Who else can hold you? Who else can embrace you? Who else will speak to you? Who else will encourage you? Who else will say what you need to know? Who else will strengthen you when you feel like his job. Dispatch angels to come and minister strength to you. So don't give up. Don't walk out. Hold your head up. Because God's about to do something. Kill you for you. And in my conclusion, John 15 and 5, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do If you leave them, you're going to die. You're going to shrivel up. Folk are going to take advantage of you. They're going to use you. <laughs> See, when you leave God, you leave, and leave the world an opportunity to use you. And they say they're going to get warm by you. Why would you let somebody burn you? That's what the world does. It burns us every day. Every day. It burns us. But in Christ, when they come to burn you, he shields you. Watch this. Psalm 66, I promise you I'm closing.
66, 10, 11, and 12. is tried. Thou hast brought us into the net. Thou latest affliction upon our lords. You have cast men to rot over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. Okay, you want to fire you in the water? Y'all stuck and I don't know what to do. But when you start blessing God, 